everyone. We're going to do a quick tutorial here for the Winter Birds embroidery pattern. I'm so excited about this one. So if you grab the kit, there's going to be two color options for the fabric. There's this kind of a light, very cool, almost purple gray. And then there's this uh, tan color. You can see my original was a little bit more of a rich, richer tan color. Um, you know, sometimes when I get these printed, it's it can be challenging to do an exact color match, but it's it's pretty close. And then if you if you know you want something a little bit more cooler, a little bit perhaps more wintry feeling, you can go with this option. So uh, all the guidelines are printed on here. One thing that's a little tricky is that two of our colors are very close in color, the two lightest greens. Um, so careful when you're using that floss uh, so you don't mix them up. And you can see here the, the, the color is close too because the color is close. So uh, they are so close that if you mix them up, it's probably not the end of the world. So don't worry too much. All right. So your kit's going to come with floss, all the floss you need, some needles, and a hoop, just a regular hoop. I'm using one of these like upgrade uh, beechwood hoops that are great for stitching in and then I usually use those other hoops for framing in this case though I kind of splurged and used one of these like imitation wood hoops. I think it looks really good with the uh, the browns here. Okay let's stitch. I said it was going to be brief and here I am going off. Okay we're going to start up here. So pretty much all we're going to be doing with this pattern is chain stitch. Actually, I should not start way down there. We'll start up here. <laughs> you can start anywhere you want. I just don't want to demonstrate that much. <laughs> so we're, I'm using three strands of floss, so be sure to separate your floss before you get started. If you need help with stuff like separating your floss and threading your needle and anchoring, you can watch my beginner's video or read more about it in the beginner booklet, either the hard copy that comes with your kit or there's the version of it on my website that has the photos and the videos. So I am just doing some chain stitch. Uh, if you can keep your stitches like equal length, it'll look neater. I do the stabbing method for my chain stitch, which might look clumsy to the sewers out there, but it works for me. <laughs> Another option would be to do reverse chain stitch. I can put a link for a little demonstration on that. I used to prefer reverse chain stitch, but now now I've changed my mind, and that's okay. So just following on my guideline here. So I think I would actually, I'm trying to decide if you should do the fur, the fur branches first or the birds first. And because I can't decide, it's probably not that important. I think it's kind of good to do the fur branches first because they're like a nice warm up for chain stitch. It's kind of the nice thing about this pattern is like I did all the fur branches just sitting cozy on the couch watching shows with my husband. Because they don't require a lot of thinking. Just repetitive and relaxing. birds a little bit trickier once I get to that demonstration I can show you more about the diagram and how we're gonna work those so at the end of your of your line here of chain stitch if you want to just make a short stitch here to tack the end that's fine or you can get kind of fancy and make like a long one because it's right it's like the end of the branch so maybe it'd be a little longer like that or even have it in a different direction. 
Okay, so next I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna work my way back down doing these side branches. So I'll start with this one. And how I do these is I actually, I'm gonna come up here. You see I'm coming up inside a chain to do this. And I'm basically like making another branch off of this loop. I was actually a little worried about these guidelines because I wasn't sure if things would match up well, but so far so good. So in like this, like I guess I could have done two small chain stitches, but I'm doing one kind of bigger one and then like a longer, what do we want to call that? Just, it's the tacking stitch. I don't know. It's the anchor. Okay, so here I think it'll come out of this hole to cover the next guidelines for this little branch off to the side. Oops, oops. Like that. All right. And then, let's see, I guess I'll go in here. Maybe a little high, but you'll just have to use your best judgment. I mean, it's gonna look fine. No one's gonna be coming up with a magnifying glass and being like, oh, your chain stitch branch did not perfectly come out of your chain stitch. You're fired. So this one has some extra stitches. This one has some straight stitches. These are pretty easy. They're just straight stitches. And what I do is I, I come out and then just go down into one of these chains covering the guideline. One and two. That's it. So you're gonna do a lot of that. <laughs> All right, so when you need a break from doing the fur branches, you can work on the birds. So for the birds in the diagram, I have these guidelines that kind of tell you which direction to do your stitches in. And hopefully watching me do it and looking at a diagram, it'll kind of help you um, understand this diagram better. So I'm gonna start with the beak. And the beak is just going to be straight stitch. Sorry, satin stitch. Sorry, I was a little distracted. We have someone outside building a fence for us. His truck is parked like right outside my window. And he's kind of noisy. And there he is. <laughs> I was, I've been putting off this video, but it's like he's going to be here for a while. So it's like, well, we just got to do it. Okay. So there's some satin stitch. That was kind of weird. My last stitch went the wrong direction, right? I did that so I could tuck that stitch under there. All right, so then what I did for this one, and the reason I chose this bird was because I think this is the most complicated bird. So what I did for my sample bird is I actually added a couple straight stitches here. Let's see. Let's do, uh, I can't, let's do And that was just to kind of define this beak a tiny bit more. I'm sorry, guys. Eddie's got something going on. Sometimes he swears. Hopefully we, hopefully we won't have to hear that. All right. It used to be the cats that would bug us in the videos, and now it's, now it's Eddie, because I swear, like, ever since we moved here, we're always doing something in the yard. Okay. So let's move on. 
So the, the rule of thumb is like stitches start at the head, at the beak, and then move away. So that's why I'm starting so close here. And I'm just going to work this. So I'll probably describe a lot of what I'm doing at the beginning. And then I'll just, I'll keep stitching this bird on camera so you can see. But hopefully I won't have anything to say. So you can just put on some tunes or whatever. Do people say that? I have my back door open and there is this huge tree out there and it is, I call it the bird hotel. Like you go outside and it almost sounds like someone's playing a nature tape because the birds are just so ridiculously loud and beautiful. So usually that's what I get to hear. So again, with this last stitch, with my anchor stitch or my tacking stitch, whatever you want to call it, you can kind of play with it. So I'm going to have it actually go up and follow my guideline with that. All right, so then for the next bit, I'm actually going to come back here and do something similar right here. You can see I, I did carry this floss, but I think we're okay. It wasn't too far. So the other sound we hear a lot is the neighbor's donkey. It's so funny. It's just not what I'm used to, guys. I did not grow up on a farm. So you can see, you know, I was talking about which direction to go with your chain stitch. This makes the most sense if you keep that rule from the beak away. I know we didn't start at the beak. Hmm. Okay, so this vertical stripe is a little sketchy. I'm trying to think, I think I went up with it. Yeah, that's what it looks like in my in my previous one and I'm gonna do that again that might go against the rule I just said <laughs> a little I don't think it'll matter too much oh my gosh I hear the donkey Oh, uh, I, I doubt my phone can pick up sounds like that. Or maybe it can, which is disturbing because then you can probably hear my stomach when it's rumbling and stuff like that. Okay, so I snuck in two stitches here. Now I'm gonna switch to the medium brown, which I have secured on top of my hoop so I wouldn't snag it. All right, and I'm gonna do a stripe Make sure I have this pulled tight. And I'm gonna do a stripe here. So what I would do in general for these cardinal-like birds, I would do the beaks first and then start working the if there's any details, work the details and then fill in the rest on the head and then work your way down. For the really simple little birds with just the tiny beaks, I did those beaks last because I have them overlapping the heads. So you do the eyes and the beaks at the end.
again and kind of follow along the guideline with that last little stitch. And I have a stripe here. If you're not in a chain stitch, you could definitely do a different stitch here. You could do this with back stitch, split stitch, you could do satin stitch. That'd be interesting. Okay, so since I already have the brown on my needle, I'm just going to start working on the wing from here. You can see all the stitches kind of start from the same starting point. Again, on here I don't have arrows to show you which direction we're going, but like I said, use that rule, go away from the head. So that means we're starting here and going down. So I'm gonna start, uh, when you have a shape like this, uh, what I like to do is do my outlines first and then come in and fill in. Uh, so I'll show you some, some tricks here with that. Two. So it looks like I did one row on this front side and two rows on the back side. So another thought I had for this design that might be kind of cool is to put snow on the branches. Wouldn't that be cute? You could use white or you could even have fun and get some metallic floss. I did that with a project recently. I actually mixed white with metallic. So I got, ow, I just like stabbed my face with my needle. How is that possible? I'm okay. Oh my word. <laughs> wow, that was new. Okay, moving on. So yeah, grab a, one strand of metallic and one strand of white and thread them both through the eye of your needle. And then you get the metallic, but you also get the brightness of the white. It's kind of pretty. Let's see, I think I can fit two more stitches here, so I'm just gonna I eyeball that so that I could split the difference of that distance. Cool. I'm gonna go back up and do the other side. Starting from the same hole up here, if I can. So I'm hoping to just show this one bird. The other ones are all easier. If you get stuck, let me know, because if I hear from multiple people that there's another bird that's trickier than I thought, I can always follow up with a, another video. Again, I did travel when I started this outline. So if, if you're worried, you can always kind of weave through the back of your stitches as you go up to kind of secure that length of floss. So it's not just back there getting caught on stuff. Let's see, you can tell I've been twisting my needle. 
If I was not hooked up to this, I would do the dangle method. The dangle method is where you just let go of your floss and let it dangle and let gravity twist it for you. That's the official term, the dangle method. Alright, so we have another row. Like, I can't really fit another stitch out of that same hole, so I'm just going to go near it. So I just pierced that floss. I don't want to pierce the floss. I just want to go next to it. And I'm going to do another row down the left. So I'm going to move on to the off-white. Back at the top. So if you've watched my videos before, you know I prep all this floss ahead of time. And I just put knots put knots at the ends so that I don't have to worry about flipping my hoop over while trying to demonstrate. And it works. It's fine. I mean, there's probably more elegant ways to anchor your floss, but nothing bad has happened yet. I'm putting these knots in my hoop, so if that's what you chose to do, don't worry. Hmm, is this relaxing? This project's so relaxing. Oh, and so I'm super excited. I'm going to be doing, I haven't started the others yet, but the plan is to do something similar for every season. So I'll have a winter bird and a spring bird and a summer bird. And I don't know, I want them to be similar enough that you can tell that it's a set. Let me pause here and see what I did here. So it looks like I did whatever I wanted. <laughs> it's it's hard to tell. Okay, I think I can see what I did. So I followed along here. And actually my, okay, let's see, my guidelines should be accurate. So yeah, I, I'm going to follow up like that. Uh, let's come out here try that so yes yeah, so I'm super excited so stay tuned for those other projects if you have any uh, requests for type of birds for certain seasons let me know and I don't know if those will be just full of chain stitch or what I don't know yet they don't yet exist So I'm going to cover up that little eye spot with these and at the end you do a French knot over the top 
or if you're not into French knots, you can just do like a teeny tiny stitch, like a straight stitch, and then do another straight stitch on top. You can do it like a teeny, teeny, tiny cross stitch to fill it in. So on my sample hoop for the the spot on the back of the head here, I changed directions with my chain stitch and I don't know why, but I'll do the opposite on this one so we can see, like it probably won't make any difference. So if you like are working on a bird and you realize, oh my gosh, my chain stitch is going the wrong way. I have to pull out all the stitches. Don't don't do it. It's fine. It, it's fine. <laughs> this is all just suggestions. So here in this tiny little blank spot, I'm just going to put a single detached chain stitch to fill it in. Teeny, 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 tiny. Boop, boop. Tuck it in. There you go, buddy. Okay, so I did from top down, so I'm going to do bottom up here, so I will come, actually, mm, yeah, okay, I'm going to do one row from this tucked in spot. I've been rewatching Lost while I was stitching this, which I've seen way too many times. Because I, when I stitch, I can't really focus on new content well. Like, I try. It's like, oh, while I'm stitching, I'll listen to podcasts and get really smart. I just can't concentrate. All I can do is watch reruns because <laughs> I'm only half watching. So here you can see I started off to the side. Like, I'm doing the outline, basically. Rather than going right next to that row we already started. And then I just have a little hole there that I'm going to fill with kind of a goofy chain stitch. It's going to be like a diagonal weird guy here. With this see that loop how it's kind of overlapping on my brown stripe so I want to pull it a little tighter there I think that worked cool that's it so if we look at the difference here I went down and here I went up and like I mean can anyone tell this probably looks better to be honest because now all the way along here there's you can see the tiny little talking stitches which looks very neat so I guess that would be my preferred way but if I hadn't like shown you that would you have noticed probably not all right so I'm gonna fill in this wing okay yeah so I'm rewatching lost I probably won't make it to the end because if you've seen it, you know the end. Well, the earlier seasons are better. It's one of those ones I wish I wish I could watch new. I love those those movies or those shows where you're like, man, I wish I could see this for the first time again. Be surprised all over again. Let's see, Eddie's packing up his truck. Earlier he was like pounding on something. It was so loud, I was like, oh no. Sometimes we call him Cousin Eddie, like from Christmas Vacation.
I'm gonna come down this side. Uh oh. There's some, something bad's happening. Everything's okay now. Oops, not quite. <laughs> there we go. Now everything's okay. I had tangled one of my parked threads, which is why I'm not really into parking my threads, because I was, oops, excuse me, tangled. So um, I seem to be doing a pretty good job with coverage here. From my angle, I thought maybe I had a little hole over here. I'm not sure hole's the right word. Just like a little strip where I didn't get my stitches as close as maybe I should have. I just want to show you my trick for filling those. So I just use split stitch because split stitch is just like miniature chain stitch, kind of. At least that's what it looks like. It is, yeah, we'll just say that's what it looks like without getting too deep into it. So I'll put some in here once, like once you get to a place where, you know, you've outlined your shape, you've made your rows. So get closer and closer and at the end you're gonna have like a weird space to fill so one trick is like you know use that anchor stitch to kind of fill in right so here my anchor stitch is kind of long to fill in that gap so here you can see I could I guess put chain stitch there but what I'm gonna do is use split stitch or even just a straight stitch if you just have a teeny tiny thing to fill. Oops. There we go. Just like that. It just like blends in. I feel like this stitch is kind of weird. I don't know. It's just like a little bit puffy. Okay. So, again, filling this shape, I would just do my outline first, having my stitch direction be away from the head. So 
I would do this outline and then I would do come back up and do the outline where the wing is meeting the chest and then I go back and fill it. Same for the tail. What do you think? You got it? Hopefully you're stitching already. I just have a little knot here in my thread, so I'm gonna stop here and just show you the eye really quick. That'll just take a second. So I want it to be on the white. So because if it's up here, we won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna put it like here. Do a French knot. Um, I think I'll just wrap once. So that's it. Please send me an email if you have any questions. Enjoy yourselves. Again, if there's another bird that you guys need to see, let me know. If I have a bunch of requests, I will. I will do that. Okay? I'm still going. I thought I was going to turn off the camera, but I'm still going. There's nothing new here. <laughs>